Hi, Rick here and I'm about to start the Cardassian Struggle story arc of Star Trek Online and this video is to establish the lore of the events that led up to the year 2409. Commander Sarish Minna of Deep Space Nine has requested your assistance with a delicate matter involving Cardassia and Bajor. Exploring what it is that happened to the Cardassian people post-Dominion. At the end of the Dominion War, the Founders had ordered a genocide of the Cardassian people, and many fell to the Jem'Hadar before the Cardassian Liberation Front, led by Damar and advised by Commander Kieran Reese, halted their efforts. Although victorious, it was a hollow win, as Cardassia had been left in ruins, with no government and many wounded. This event came to be called the Fire. In the aftermath, the Federation offered assistance to help rebuild the fallen people and the remaining political figures began to look back through what had worked for them in the past to devise a new governmental structure. For example, in 2372, three years before the end of the fire, the Datapa Council had been temporarily created before being disassembled in the face of the Dominion Alliance, but many saw this as a potential for creating a new regime. However, back in 2372, the True Way had formed in response to the Datapa Council and wanted to focus on expansion in a military controlled state. The True Way seemingly dissolved when they joined the Dominion too. Some say that the original True Way movement was first established in ages past and instilled people into positions of power, eventually becoming the Obsidian Order. Meanwhile, a soon-to-be influential figure in shaping Cardassian's futures, Elim Garrick, returned to Cardassia Prime and attempted to help rebuild while staying out of the spotlight. Eventually, the surviving old guard of Cardassian politics wished to bring him on board to help recreate the familiar power structure they'd once had, thinking his involvement in the Obsidian Order would make him sympathetic to their cause. During their discussions, Garak realised that there was nothing left of the old Cardassia, so he turned to Alon Gamor and his fledgling democratic movement. After the devastation of the Dominion War, the Cardassians chose a path that would lead their planet to prosperity and democracy. Not everyone agreed with this choice. A secret organisation, dedicated to the return of the Cardassian Union, and the Obsidian Order, plagues Federation and Cardassian forces, seeking to overturn newfound freedoms in favour of oppression and aggression. 2376 saw the Federation help Cardassia rebuilding its own agriculture through the Interstellar Agricultural Aid Commission under the lead of Chief Botanist Keiko O'Brien. The initiative was necessary as much of Cardassia's former farmland had fallen to neglect as the culture had adopted increasingly aggressive expansion over the years, like the occupation of Bajor. The government that emerged was a democracy with a Castellan at the head, the first being Alon Gimor. In 2378, the Federation requested an official ambassador from Cardassia to deal with, and this became one Elim Garak. In 2381, the new Castellan was Rakenna Garan, and over the next couple of years, the Orlean Way gained much support. This was a religion of old Cardassia that preached unity with the land. Unsurprisingly, the True Way was re-established to oppose this under Denison Morad. The True Way, much as before, stood for the militarisation and control that the old Cardassian state operated under. Ambassador Garak dedicated his training from the Obsidian Order to combat the True Way's machinations openly and covertly, and by 2385 the True Way was back to operating as it had in the past, recruiting like-minded political figures in secret and seating them into positions of influence, even within the pro-democratic Rakenna Garan's government. After Garan stepped down that year, Evek Temet, a True Way supporter, ran for office. Ambassador Garak decided to step up and run in opposition. Garak won the election for Castellan. He devoted significant time and resources to dismantling the True Way movement that was still operating in the shadows. Garak was still in office in 2389, surviving a full term. I guess it's difficult to assassinate a trained assassin. The rebuilding of Cardassia had been a continuous effort from every political party, 
However, the method and priorities of almost every party disagreed. This meant that the process was a long affair, and in 2386, the Federation signs an agreement with Cardassia. The Cardassian Union was to fully demilitarise to be able to devote resources entirely to rebuilding efforts. In return, Starfleet will assume the duties of protection of Cardassian borders and space. This choice faced a lot of opposition though. The smaller Cardassian Defence Force operates in its place, and is more akin to a police force, and operates in cohort with Starfleet. In 2388, Garrick reforms the Datapa Council as a true democracy, and sends aid to help the Romulan people after the Hovus supernova. Most Cardassians feel that they should be focusing on rebuilding themselves, however, and helping the Romulans is a diversion of resources. To compound dissent, the Federation reduce aid supplied to Cardassia by 30% to help critical Romulan refugees instead. In 2389, Gol Madred, a former military leader, begins extensive and lucrative mining operations, gaining him much support, and soon, Grand Nagus Rom strikes a deal with the Tatapa Council to finance industrial construction on Cardassia. In return, Ferenginar gets exclusive trade rights with the Cardassian Union. The Datapa Council also begins to offer incentives for Cardassian families and births, and finds employment for the many ex-military personnel. Madred recruits an extensive number of these former soldiers for his mining operations. By 2392, Gal Madred has obtained around 75 Galor class warships since the end of the Dominion War, and built a significant ex-military presence and begins to get more involved in the political stances against Garrick's reforms and the Datapa Council. Though in 2393, Cardassia, through the Ferengi Alliance, has begun to manufacture starships, including advanced science vessels, a profitable venture for both Cardassia and the Ferengi. By 2401, Elim Garrick had stepped down from leadership. With that history lesson out of the way, we're pretty much all caught up with current Star Trek events and ready to begin the Cardassian struggle. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to find a likely looking Lurian courier. Ah, Morn, my buddy! How have you been? Morn looks off into the distance, wondering where to begin, and with a swirl of his drink, he prepares his amazing tale. I shouldn't have asked. He's never going to shut up.